A lot of times when we talk about being in love, it's what kind of feelings do I have? And I don't think a man's love is a feeling love. That's a mommy love. And a lot of our relationships that we get in with women take on a mommy and a, and a boy love sort of relationship. And so the same way that a father loves his son with correction and with logic and with direction and even with some harsh realities, right? Like with my son, like I'm tough on my son. He knows I love him because that's how I show my love. Hey, I expect more than you. Hey, you could do better than that. Hey, so there is a rational exchange of uh, how you could say elevated expectation in a masculine love. A womanly love, a female love, a feminine love is very soft, receptive, and tolerant. A father's love is intolerant because a father loves you up to what you could be. A mother loves down to you no matter what you are. If we don't understand that, either because this world is so gynocentric and anti-father, or because we have mommy addictions and never really understood or received that type of patriarchal love from our father, we're going to start to think that all of our romantic relationships need to be more like how my mommy loved me and I love my mommy, right? And I'm not, I don't know your relationship with you and your mom, but it's more of a matter of that baby boy mommy connection that is, in, that, is, that is like imprinted in all of our DNA, even if you didn't have a mom. You want to be coddled, you want to be cuddled, and you want this sort of reciprocal oozy, ooey gooey feeling that you have between one another. That's not masculine love. That's, when you say dependency, that's dependent love, but it's, it's a perverted dependent love because it's a love that requires feeling. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be attracted to your wife, and we could talk about that in a moment, right? Because sexual attraction, sexual attraction can also be a logical thing, too. I, I, I don't know how it is for you guys. I know a lot of you guys watch a lot of porn, so you think that everything's supposed to feel good or it's supposed to be some sort of exciting adventure. Um, they say if a woman has been very promiscuous, she has a hard time pair bonding. Well, if a man watches a lot of porn, he basically has an unlimited cache of a harem of digital brides. So he has a hard time pair bonding too. And so a lot of guys, like they, they say they're not attracted to their, to their girl or whatever. It's because you're still caught up in the daydreams of porn. And you could actually still be caught up in the daydream of your ex-girlfriend. If you masturbate, you might even still be thinking about her. So you're caught up in an imaginary fake world of attraction that doesn't leave you present for actually feeling the attraction for the woman that's right in front of you. It's like you've escaped the reality. So a lot of guys who would say they're not attracted to their girlfriend, I'm like, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. Because most men will bone anything with a hole in a heartbeat. It's like this woman loves you and is giving her life to you and is dependent on you. I like that my wife is dependent on me. I don't want to, this is another one that comes from our perverted culture. I don't want a strong, independent woman. I, it turns me on that my wife is dependent on me. She depends on me and it turns me on. I love that she depends on me. I don't understand why you would want a woman that doesn't depend on you. Why would I want a woman that doesn't need me? That's the thing about men and women, it's a little different. For a man to feel like he's filling, fulfilling his role, for a man to be fulfilling his role in a relationship, because we are the dominant partner, we need something to pour our love down on. Love is gravity. Love is poured down. Respect is, is, is elevated, is up. That's why children are called to respect their parents, not love them. Parents, are supposed, they love their children. And in, in the Bible, it also says, husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect your husband. It doesn't say, in the Bible, doesn't, notice this, it doesn't say husbands respect your wife. <laughs> if she's dependent on you, that means that you must have something that she looks up to. She probably, she looks up to you. There's nothing better than a woman that looks up to you. I don't want a woman that thinks she's equal to me and looks, you know, the whole thing where the men and women call themselves by partner. That's what homosexuals call each other. Homosexuals call each other partners. My partner. She's not your partner, she's your wife. This other girl, the one that broke up with you, she was your, she was the husband in the relationship. 
She was your mom and she was your husband. She was a corporate girl. I think you said she was a people pleaser, but she was ashamed of you. She was trying to change you. You don't want a girl that's ashamed of you, a corporate girl that, that looks down on you. She, and she wasn't dependent on you. That's unattractive. It's good that you broke up with her. The closure is not with her. You don't need closure with her. You need closure with your relationship to this domineering, dominant sort of masculine kind of woman. The girl you have right now is feminine. And I'm not, I'm not teasing you when I say this and I'm not making fun of you or poking at you. I'm just talking bluntly. A woman never wants to bring a man up. If a woman has to bring you up, she's gonna resent you because a woman wants a man that pulls her up or a man that she could look up to. So the dynamics were completely perverted in your old relationship, but you're still addicted to that, to that dynamic. You're addicted to the dynamic of being passive, of being the little boy, of being the feminine partner in a relationship. Now you have the right dynamics, but it's uncomfortable for you. She actually is smaller than you. She actually does look up to you. She actually is a feminine girl. She does depend on you. So more so than trying to have closure with the old girl or trying to make yourself be attracted to this girl, you got to resolve whatever it is within you that causes you to make yourself feminine. Why are you so passive with women? A lot of times this happens when you're, you know, a lot of single moms, a lot of single moms raise passive boys because the mom was strong and independent and she teaches the boy, you know, um, I don't need no man and you need to be the kind of man that I wanted your dad to be. And usually that looks like I wish he was more like a woman. And so the boy grows up wanting to save his mom by acting like a woman. And so I'm not in your situation. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what I see from the outside. But your current girlfriend right now, I'm attracted to her. <laughs> I don't even know what she looks like. <laughs> send me a picture. <laughs> don't send me a picture. Don't, do not send me a picture. I'm joking. <laughs> but your, your current girlfriend, like that's attractive to me. Hear your own language. The one that I have now is the opposite, okay? That means she's feminine. She's very nurturing, oh man. She's going to be a good wife. She's going to be a good mother. She's good mother, nurturing, supportive. She's going to be a good wife. Adores you. Man, even though you chose the right word, adore. You want a woman that adores you. That's very rare. You're not going to find that in this world. I've even showed her your content and she's supporting me through this program. She wants to see you be the best you. She adores you. She supports you. And she wants you to be the best version of you. She's turned out to be my best friend. Stop right there. You've got a unicorn. You got the best thing in the world. I'm breaking it down a little bit more. But my issue is I'm, I don't feel attracted to her. Okay. We already spoke about that. Don't go with the feelings. Be rational about it. Make yourself attracted to her. Now, I don't, again, I don't know what she looks like physically. But as long as she's not paper bag over her head, butt fugly, nasty you know does she have as long as she has you know two eyeballs <laughs> all her teeth is she missing teeth you know what i'm saying like there's some some standards that should be there right as long as she's not missing any teeth and you know her you know she doesn't have one eye over here and one eye over there but even that you could <laughs> you could make yourself be kinky like you know, girl i love your i love your crooked eye I love her, but I'm sure I'm not in love with her. Only women say that. Don't ever say that again. Even the whole ruminating about this and, and humming and hawing over it is you're, you're being effeminate. Don't overthink it. Hey, is she going to make a good wife? Yeah. I mean, on paper? Yeah. Is she going to make a good mother? Mother? Yeah. On paper? Yeah. Can I tolerate looking at her? Yeah. You have no problems. Your life is good. <laughs> Get out of your feels. Get out of your feels. That's it. That's all. That's my long, convoluted rant on that, dude. Hope that helps. Done. Porn. 68% of church-going men watch it secretly, hiding this vice from their wife. For other men, it's alcohol. 
or drug use? Are you willing to risk your marriage, family, and finances for sinful pleasures and vice? Or are you ready to fight back? If you're a married Christian businessman or entrepreneur, caught in the clutches of drinking, drugs, or jerking off, realize that every moment spent in these vices is literally destroying your life. Is this the man God called you to be, to live like this? If you're ready to go to war against vice and take your life back, here's my advice. Click the link in this video or visit waronvice.com to book a call with me to see if we're a good fit for going into battle together. I'll see you on the inside.